I would like to talk about uh, chiral transport theories and the anomalous effects uh, that can be found uh, from the chiral kinetic theories for massive and also um, massless spin-out particles. Uh, I will try to give a talk uh, consistent with the uh, aims of this organization. So um, in the first part, uh, we will just focus on the uh, general and simple questions, which will be uh, the main core of uh, my studies and also the chiral kinetic theory. I am starting with the general questions and then I will introduce the anomalous transport effects. And the last two parts will be a little bit technical uh, to explain how we can um, obtain um, such an anomalous transport effects um, from the semi-classical chiral kinetic theory. Um, covariant version and non-covariant version. Uh, let's begin with the simple question, what is chirality? Uh, chirality is a property of being non-identical to, uh, to one's mirror image. Uh, if the object looks different in a mirror, like, um, like this uh, script um, in the picture, it's chiral. Uh, if not, it's a chiral like this nail. Uh, chirality is, um, plays a very important role uh, in many different areas, not only in physics, but uh, many different disciplines uh, from biology to chemistry. Uh, in physics, it's an intrinsic quantum property, uh, and chirality, have, chirality has a right handed and left handed property, which corresponds to um, if, if the object, uh, object spin is parallel to the momentum, it's right hand knot. Um, if opposite, if uh, the particle spin is opposite to the direction of the uh, momentum, it's left hand knot. Uh, there can be found many chiral molecules and particles in the universe. Uh, for instance, um, living organisms. Uh, contains almost all left-handed amino acids and right-handed sugars. And in a, some atomic words, all, I think all uh, we know that only left-handed neutrinos exist in the standard model. Uh, but my favorite example is from chemistry. Metamethaphene uh, has two isomers, left-handed and right-handed. Uh, left-handed uh, is just weeks, it's used for fight coach or cold issues, something like that. It's legal, of course, but uh, right handed metamethaphene uh, is illegal because it makes uh, people feel high. Maybe some of us uh, are familiar with this guy uh, from the Breaking Bad. Uh, if you haven't watched the series, uh, I will strongly recommend, and you can be sure that these guys um, are pretty sure how to use uh, right handed metamethaphene. And the other simple question is the uh, what's anomaly? Anomaly um, can be thought of uh, classical symmetry breaking uh, at the quantum level. Uh, but before passing uh, what is uh, what the chiral anomaly is, I will um, give a summary what's chiral symmetry. Um, let's let us consider the gauge theory of uh, massless fermions. It's a, a general theory, but uh, you can choose uh, the specific uh, gauge group to be, uh, for example, SU3. And if you choose SU3, the fermions um, can be thought of uh, quarks, and this theory uh, will describe the QCD, but we don't care. Um, we just um, focused on the what's chiral symmetry. Uh, in this theory, they mu. Um, is covariant derivative F mini electromagnetic field tensor, M is the four vector potential. And this theory um, has a global symmetry, uh, which is XLU1 symmetry. It's commonly known as the um, chiral symmetry also. And we have a vector and XL vector currents. Okay. Sorry, uh, Siri is working. Uh, and um, in the, we know that in the quantum field theory, uh, the global symmetry leads to 
um, conservation currents. And if you have um, this kind of U1 uh, chiral symmetry, uh, our axial and uh, vector, axial vector currents, vector and axial vector currents uh, will be conserved. However, um, sometimes this classical conservation law uh, can be violated by the quantum fluctuations. Um, it's because of the uh, loop effects coming from the Feynman diagrams. And in this case, um, the axial anomaly occurs and um, the axial vector current uh, can, is uh, no longer uh, be conserved. And in this stage, we can say that quantum anomalies um, carry some information about the anomalous transport effects. And axial anomaly um, will generate the two types of uh, anomalous transport effects. The most uh, well-known effect is the chiral magnetic effect. Uh, this term refers to uh, refers that the uh, generation of the electric currents uh, induced by the um, chiral imbalance in the presence of the uh, magnetic field. Uh, mu A is the chemical potential, which is equal to uh, mu right handed and minus mu left handed. And it donors the chiral imbalance. If in the system uh, right handed, there are more uh, left handed fermions than right handed fermions, it's the, there's a, uh, it's the chiral imbalance. And in this case, in the presence of the magnetic field, the chiral magnetic effect can be, can be generated. But the most important thing uh, here one should keep in mind is that chiral imbalance uh, is essential, but not sufficient to produce this kind of anomalous effect um, because uh, axial anomaly, anomaly, chiral anomaly, and uh, chiral imbalance um, are, are essential to produce this kind of anomaly. And chiral separation effect can be thought of um, as the dual version of the uh, chiral magnetic effect. The only difference is, uh, is mu A is here and mu V is here. Mu V is the chemical uh, potential. And uh, in this case, uh, it can be interpreted as the mu V corresponds to um, the imbalance between the um, particles and antiparticles. But in chiral magnetic effects, uh, there's an imbalance between the number of the right handed and left handed fermions. And like the magnetic field, also um, global rotations or vorticity can also generate this kind of uh, transport effects. And axial anomaly is responsible. Uh, for this uh, effects. And chiral vertical effects, um, there can be, um, we can uh, draw the analogy between the chiral magnetic effect and uh, chiral vertical effect. Um, B is, it seems that B is replaced by two times mu V omega. And this uh, relation can be found uh, the symmetry can be found um, between the uh, Lorentz force and uh, Coriolis force. And the last effect I would like to introduce is the local polarization effect. Um, it denotes that um, the right handed fermions uh, spins uh, move parallel to the um, right handed fermions momentum move. Uh, parallel to the direction of the vorticity. And uh, since right handed fermions, uh, spin uh, has to be parallel to the uh, momentum, its momentum. Uh, all spins uh, move uh, parallel to the direction of the vorticity. And this situation um, creates uh, this kind of uh, anomalous effect in, in the system. 
And this, uh, all these uh, transport effects can also be studied in different areas. For example, heavy ion collisions, especially um, on the studies of quark gluon plasma. And also chiral magnetic effects recently has been observed in the condensed matter systems, vial and drag semi-metals. And also uh, the neutron stores has uh, immense and immense uh, in this um, case, in this astrophysics uh, setup, uh, they also have a strong magnetic field and vorticity and this kind of transport effects can also uh, be studied uh, in this setup. And after this introduction part, we are coming closer to what I specifically studied. Um, I, I would like to, um, I want them to imagine um, when we, when we hear the chiral kinetic theory, what we understand from this, uh, this theory. I think it's a simple explanation. Uh, chiral kinetic theory gives us the um, classical Boltzmann uh, transport equations, including quantum anomalies. Uh, these quantum anomalies, also we know that um, induced by the uh, magnetic field and the vorticity. And to, uh, to generate this kind of um, transport effects from the kinetic theory, uh, we should have uh, two main ingredients. One of them, um, as we expect, the chiral anomaly, and the other, uh, Berry monopole. Uh, our theory, our kinetic theory, should include uh, somehow Berry monopole, Berry curvature. And chiral anomaly plus, plus uh, Berry monopole give us the chiral magnetic effect. And this study, um, and this work is studied by Stefano van Nind almost uh, 10 years ago. And they also uh, give an answer to you know, how we uh, calculate the chiral vertical effect, like chiral magnetic effect, because our our equations just know of the electromagnetic uh, fields and how we can produce the chiral vertical effects. And they simply use the uh, relation between the um, Lorentz force and Coriolis force. They, they added the Coriolis force into the um, equations of motions and they, um, they explicitly give the uh, chiral vertical effects. And uh, we also uh, see that the, this relation also uh, has um, between chiral magnetic effect and chiral vertical effect. Um, I want to gather all earlier works uh, in this chart. Um, I already mentioned um, Stefano and Nien's um, works. They use the uh, class collection with very connection and they add the correlates force into the uh, their equation of motions and then Chen and his groups developed this theory by uh, by working with the by driving the relativistic chiral kinetic equations and uh, more or less same groups uh, also show the Lorentz invariance of this theory, and they also work with the collisions. But all these uh, studies, also the yellow one, including the yellow one, uh, are on a deal with the masses fermions. And then uh, the blue one and the purple one uh, in the studies, um, this kinetic theory um, is established by the, for the uh, massive fermions. And Nora and her group uh, studied um, by used the uh, Wigner function formalism uh, to, to obtain the kinetic theory of massive fermions, but uh, they just used the, um, just produce the uh, kinetic theories in the presence of the just electromagnetic fields. But we, uh, but we developed this theory um, in the presence of the electromagnetic fields 
uh, and uh, vertex and the rotating frame at the same time. I will explain why it's important for us. And um, we also uh, we also use the Wigner function formalism and quantum kinetic equation to um, to establish the covariance form uh, chiral kinetic theory. And then we will we will find a way to um, to generate the three dimensional um, chiral kinetic equations. And the Wigner function um, can be described as the uh, analog of the uh, classical distribution function. Uh, in quantum theory, um, classical distribution, fast space distribution function uh, is replaced by the uh, Wigner function. And here, PCs are the direct spinners. Uh, U is the gauge link, which uh, ensures this term is a gauge invariant. P is a pet order product. A is the Young's field potential. And expectation value of the uh, Wigner operator gives the Wigner function. And Wigner function satisfy the quantum kinetic equation. And by means of the quantum kinetic equation, uh, the relativist dynamics of the relativistic fluid uh, can be described. Uh, this um, this, uh, this uh, quantum kinetic equation um, is studied since um, 1978. And here, uh, G0 and GI are the uh, first kind of Bessel functions. And the Wigner function can be decomposed um, in terms of the uh, 16 independent generators of the Clifford algebra, whose coefficients um, behave um, scalar to the scalar vector, axial vector, and the tensor under the Lorentz transformation. I, I call standard quantum uh, kinetic equation because um, the gauge invariant um, Wigner function satisfy um, this quantum kinetic equation. And this quantum kinetic equation uh, all depends only uh, electromagnetic fields. They don't know um, the vertex effects. And to overcome this uh, situation, because we would like to uh, generate the uh, anomalous transport effects uh, induced by the vertex uh, in, from the same formalism, and to overcome this situation, um, we decided to add uh, some, some terms related to vertexity into the quantum kinetic equation, uh, specifically in the um, nonla mu. And we also know the relation between the chiral magnetic effect and the chiral vertical effect. And if we want to um, attain the uh, consistent chiral uh, vertical effects, local polarization effects. Um, we need to, we need to know uh, what specifically um, what the specific terms are. And um, this this discussions uh, after this discussions we we decided to add circulation tensor. Um, it has. Uh, three pieces. One piece is the kinematic vertex tensor. And um, we add uh, this term uh, to the lambda mu in the quantum kinetic equation to take into account the non inertial forces. Uh, and in this point, uh, you can ask me why we, why we add all terms in the circulation tensor. Or maybe we can just add uh, two h omega mu nu. H is uh, entropy, is the same scale as uh, it can be thought of um, as an energy. Um, and it's it seems very logical to add just a kinematic vertex tensor because it's um, it's the similar it's it's the similar the uh, chiral 
between the uh, has a similarity between the chiral magnetic effect and chiral vertical effect. And so my answer is uh, simple. Uh, in the beginning, we just add this term in the circulation tensor because we suppose that it's enough to, to produce the correct uh, anomalous effects in the spider vorticity, but it, it didn't work. And we add all terms, but it didn't work. And we decided to add um, this term. And uh, fortunately, uh, this, this terms gives the uh, correct results. And then um, we, can, we can summarize and uh, we can show what is the next step. Um, after um, modified this uh, quantum kinetic equation, um, by plugging the um, Wigner functions into the quantum uh, kinetic equation, we we found um, we found ten ten set equations. But uh, in this stage, uh, we are only interested in the masses fermions, uh, vector and axial vector um, equations get decoupled from the others, and we define J mu to represent the um, vector and axial vector components uh, of the Wigner functions. And we have now uh, three equations. And P mu, J mu, and the last one, um, which looks like a little bit complicated, are the constraint equations. And del mu, G mu is equal to zero, uh, give us the transport equations of the covariant version. And then it is, it is difficult to solve uh, this equation. We will utilize the semi-classical expansion. Actually, we already did um, this expansion here, uh, day mu, because J0 and G1 um, also include uh, many terms, but our equations uh, include only terms up to the h bar order. And we will utilize the semi classical expansion. And we will begin with the uh, P mu J mu. And after substituting um, J0 into the second constraint equation, uh, we get the uh, GI. And I mark the uh, distribution functions in red because in this stage, we don't need to know what it is. It's an arbitrary uh, distribution functions. And um, we can see our modifications in the second line, um, del mu and mu coming from our modifications. And mu is the uh, frame velocity. And later we will uh, choose the comma wing frame, uh, which means our, our uh, frame velocity will be the same as the uh, fluid velocity. And our modifications is in here also. And after, um, after getting the J mu up to the uh, H bar order, and now we will, now we can calculate the um, current terms. And in this stage, uh, we should know uh, the distribution function and we choose the Fermi direct distribution function uh, as represents the uh, particle and particle. Um, minus one represents the antiparticle and the other is represents the particle. And the other, and the other uh, parameter uh, that should be chosen is the n mu. And as I said, uh, we work with the comma ring frame and our frame velocity is equal to fluid velocity. And um, after this, um, after integrating uh, V mu and uh, A mu, uh, we calculate the current uh, and axial current. And this, uh, our modifications work, worked very well. Uh, we, we get the, a consistent chiral magnetic effects, chiral vertical effects, 
and the chiral separation and local polarization effects. But um, we can continue uh, because it's uh, we are, the other aim is to obtain the three dimensional uh, transport uh, equations uh, by using the um, covariant form formalism. And to do this, firstly, we should know uh, the covariant chiral kinetic equation. And in the beginning, I said that uh, we can understand what the chiral um, kinetic theory is, just the Boltzmann equation plus uh, anomalies. And um, we, we, try to, uh, we try to write this complicated equation like the Boltzmann equation. Because as you see, all um, F menu in front of the F menu are just uh, um, derivatives. And we can do this. We also get the energy dispersion relation from the um, drag delta function here by using the Maxwell condition. It is um, equal to zero, and uh, we get the uh, consistent uh, energy dispersion relation in the literature. And to um, to establish to not establish, but to calculate the three-dimensional uh, transport equations. Um, we, uh, we integrate four-dimensional transport equations over dp0. And uh, our uh, covariant uh, form uh, transport equations also have uh, this, this part. But um, we know that the Boltzmann equations um, should be like that. And the critical point is, and A0, uh, I0 uh, should satisfy this relation. Otherwise, uh, we, we couldn't get the three-dimensional transport equations from our formalism, even if our uh, J mu, um, by using our J mu, we can uh, we can produce the uh, correct um, anomalous effects in the four-dimensional uh, transport equations. Uh, it is not always guaranteed to get uh, the correct, to get the uh, three-dimensional transport equations. The critical point is a I zero should satisfy um, this the pink pink uh, relation, and in this case. It satisfy and uh, it give us a permission to reach the uh, three dimensional transport equations. And now uh, we reach the collisions Boltzmann equation from here. And our three dimensional, we just read the equations here. Uh, what I mean is that we already know the uh, the terms in front of the um, d over dx, for example, and we just integrate over dp0 in front of the d over dx, and this automatically gives the um, x dot and p dot. This is what we, what we did. And uh, as you see, the uh, three-dimensional transport equations and now the uh, correlates like force here. And they also has the same relation between the magnetic uh, field and the uh, vorticity, angular velocity. Um, B is the Berry curvature uh, that I introduced uh, this important term in the beginning slides. And um, this, by using uh, x dot, uh, we can check uh, the current terms again, and they also uh, and this these terms also give us the uh, consistent transport anomalous effects. And I can summarize what I explained up to now. Uh, firstly, 
um, we want we wanted to use the quantum kinetic equation and Wigner function formalism, but the standard quantum kinetic equation um, doesn't know the uh, vortices the effects, and uh, we we would like to calculate uh, the magnetic uh, the related the magnetic field and vortices. Um, we would like to calculate the transport anomalous transport. Uh, effects, all anomalous transport effects in the same formalism. We modified the quantum kinetic equation by adding additional terms by hand. Uh, and after uh, we only uh, deal with the masses fermions, our uh, equations get decoupled from the uh, other parts of the Wigner function component. And we checked, um, we checked the uh, current terms, we also check the T menu. And then um, to get the three dimensional uh, transport equations, we integrate the four uh, dimensional transport equations over P0. And um, we also obtain, can obtain the correct anomalous effects. And the other, parts, other part is related to uh, massive fermions. And okay, we also um, work uh, the curve space time. The, the, I, I just uh, talk about the Minkowski space time. Um, as I said, uh, we have uh, this circulation tensor to modify the um, quantum kinetic equation, and we choose. Um, we choose the last uh, two terms to, to get the uh, consistent chiral magnetic effect and chiral vertical effect. But in the massive case, uh, we, we should change uh, this modification because in this case, we have uh, 10 uh, set equations and all parameters are uh, coupled to each other. And um, in this case, uh, to, to get the uh, consistent results, we change the uh, modification terms. Of course, I, I couldn't uh, put all equations here. Uh, we just focus on uh, this term, the first one and the uh, last one, because uh, after, after finding the uh, V mu and A mu, up to the h bar order um, by using uh, these terms we again uh, get the similar uh, covariant transport equation like in the massless case and we again choose the fermi direct distribution function and the commoving frame we work with the commoving frame and the sum uh, we also get the uh, energy dispersion relation again um, this direct data function and we we have a uh, much more simpler uh, equation after uh, choosing these ingredients and then um, by performing the integral over p0 we again uh, establish the uh, three-dimensional transport equations. And uh, in this stage, our motivations is to, to obtain the mass correction uh, to the um, chiral magnetic effect and chiral vertical effect, and to calculate the uh, vector and axial vector currents. Um, we will again use the x dots, and then uh, we have um, these equations, and uh, we we would like to uh, calculate these coefficients. Uh, it's it's difficult to solve this integral. Uh, that's why we choose a, a simple case, and we uh, calculate these coefficients. But in the literature, there is no consensus that the uh, mass corrections should be um, exactly 
in the chiral magnetic effect and chiral vertical effect, but our results are consistent with the Kuba formalism. And I will give a general summary. Uh, firstly, we modified the quantum kinetic equation for massive and massive spin off fermions. Uh, our aim is to get the anomalous transport effects uh, from the same formalism. And after these um, modifications, um, we checked the um, current terms for massless fermions, and we also um, attained the mass corrections to the chiral magnetic effect and chiral vertical effect for Dirac particles. And we also um, established the three-dimensional transport equations for each cases. And thank you for your listening. <laughs>